1961 World Hockey Champions, the Trail Smoke Eaters, a 50-year-old story that lives on today. A proud legacy of spirit, teamwork, and achievement. Don Freer, the voice of the Smoke Eaters from 1959 to 1973, joined the team on the last leg of their journey to the World Hockey Championship. He witnessed the final game on March the 12th, 1961, and cheered the Smokies on to their historic win. Don went on to become the executive director of the BC Amateur Hockey Association. His recollections are a tribute to the team and this community to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the world champion 1961 Trail Smoke Eaters. Yeah, well, I was the uh, voice of the Trail Smoke Eaters, if you will. I was uh, called to play-by-play -play for the team. You actually went to see them win the world championship? I did. I uh, arrived in uh, Geneva, Switzerland on March the 1st, with the first game being played on March 2, and I stayed with the team in Lausanne and left with them on a quick exhibition tour of two games and then across Canada coming home uh, to be met by a wonderful crowd in the city of Trail. I thought, you know, this is a once in a lifetime situation. I'm going to be there. To me, it was like putting the, St the Stanley Cup, the World Series, and the Super Bowl all into one package. And I wanted to be there for that because I had some very good friends on that hockey team. And I wanted to be with them uh, in their quest for the World Championship. They were tagged as the worst Canadian hockey team to leave Canada to represent the country at the World Hockey Championships. And I believe myself that they had a point to prove not only to themselves, but to the rest of the world. And they did it. And I felt very comfortable, even though we had to beat the Russians in that final game by a minimum of two goals. I just knew that the team could do it. What was the major highlight of the game? Obviously, the second goal, uh, the winning goal, would, would be the highlight. Well, that's true. However, in the first period, in the opening four minutes, we received two minor penalties and killed them both. And that told me that this team is going to win. They had the best goaltender in the world, a good friend of mine, Seth Martin. They had great coaching in Bobby Crom. He was a stellar coach. So he, at times he wasn't liked, but he got the job done. And they had a great captain in Cal Hockley who showed leadership both on and off the ice. And they had great penalty killing as well they could score goals. They had an outstanding defense. Five really good defensemen. Do you remember who got the winning goal? The winning goal was scored by Harold Jones in the second period. Can you describe that? No, I can't. It was uh, a bit of a blur. Uh, we led 2 nothing, and Harold got the what, what turned out to be the eventual winner. I was standing on the boards on the sidelines, of course, couldn't go on the ice. And Jerry Penner, one of the, the Detroit players, uh, had not dressed for the game. He grabbed, grabbed a hold of me and he said, come on, Don. He says, let's get on the ice and celebrate with the boys. And that's what we did. There was some champagne in the dressing room, the steak dinner after, and then uh, uh, an official uh, gathering with the International Ice Hockey Federation. But I think it all came together in Lausanne at the Royal Hotel, a great hotel in Lausanne, Switzerland. And it was just the trail smoke eaters and the staff of the hotel, and they had a great party. And I'm sure some of them got to bed very early in the morning. Everybody behaved themselves? Absolutely. They, uh, nobody went to jail. Uh, great representatives of Canada and the Maple Leaf. I think the fact that um, they were stellar performers uh, in regards to on and off the ice, they represented their country extremely well, and everybody should be proud of the fact that uh, here was basically a homegrown hockey team. There was nine or ten of them that played all their minor hockey in, in trail and, and district, and uh, worked at Kamenko, and went on to win the big prize. It was the last truly amateur hockey team to win the World Hockey Championship, and they should be remembered for what they gave up. They were, uh, they sacrificed an awful lot. They were family people, or family uh, guys. Uh, Kamenko, uh, great uh, corporate sponsors, uh, gave them all a leave of absence, and there was about nine on that hockey team that got leave of absences. Uh, they went over on a shoestring. 
budget of about $40,000, which isn't an awful lot of money. And the, the guys were paid uh, less than the minimum wage. They all took pay cuts. They took their holidays and they, they gave it out. Uh, and I think that they should be remembered not only for the fact that they won the World Hockey Championship, but they won it as unselfish Canadian hockey players. They made their country proud. Later on, when I was involved in hockey on a full-time basis, they, you, they, somebody would say, well, where are you from? And I'd say, trail. And they'd say, oh, that's the home of the smoke eaters. So we are remembered across the country, believe me.